Yeah, what up YouTube? It's your boy Denali, aka Don Squally, back at y'all with another little video. Uh, so in this one, we are going to be doing a how-to install on intake plenum spacers for the G35 or 350Z. Um, I've got the Blox 5.8 uh, spacer. Now I did a little bit of research uh, before I bought this and the 5.16 spacers actually yield about 9 to 10 horsepower whereas the 5 8, the 5.8 spacer uh, will yield about 5 to 6 horsepower. Now I knew this before I uh, bought this spacer. The only reason that I ended up going with this spacer is actually because I was able to find it locally and uh, it only cost me a hundred bucks cash which basically saved me from import fees uh, exchange rates and um duty i think duties import fees and um the exchange rate and the shipping so i mean considering this is about 130 dollar part before shipping before the exchange rate and uh before duty fees um so considering this would be close to 200 dollars after i shipped it um I'm, you know, I'm not too upset about having a five horsepower loss. Uh, so basically it comes with these, uh, as you can see, these uh, instructions here. So we got a whole bunch of bolts we're going to have to replace these with. And um, these little washers and spacers. Now, I haven't even taken this thing out of the box, but we'll get to that. I also got some ultra copper um gasket maker just because it recommends that um so what i'm gonna do is basically get started uh just give you guys a little walkthrough i'm hoping this isn't gonna take too long it's already hot as hell out um so yeah i'm hoping we can get this job done quick before that sun really starts beating down on us so uh yeah today how to install uh intake spacer for 350z or g35 Alrighty, and before you start taking everything apart, they do tell you to disconnect the battery. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the negative terminal uh, just so we don't screw anything up. Okay, so first things first, what you're going to want to do is remove this engine cover. Uh, mine is just four bolts, uh, two at the top, two at the bottom. A 350Z one will be cut in half, uh, but these are pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead, remove this cover, and then show you the next step. Okay, so now that you got your cover off, um, what you're going to want to do, well, this is what I'm going to do, is remove this intake coupler and uh, pull this off. Uh, now, in the instructions, it tells you to drain all of the radiator fluid so you can get the uh, coolant line off of the back of the therm um, throttle body. Sorry. Um, so what I'm going to do is leave the throttle body on, and there's four little hex bolts that pull the whole thing off. That way, I'm not going to have to undo any of the coolant lines or any of that stuff uh, or drain the coolant which is really what I'm trying to avoid so I'm gonna go ahead pull that intake coupler off now when you pull your throttle body off make sure that you, you don't touch the inside because it could screw up the calibration um, but yeah we're gonna get to that in a second so I'm gonna go ahead uh, pull this intake tubing off and show you guys which hoses you need to disconnect okay so now that I've got the intake pipe out of the way as you can see there is four four hex bolts uh, one on either corner so I'm going to go ahead and remove those. I'm also going to disconnect the power to the throttle body. Now the inside of that is looking pretty dirty, but whatever you do, do not clean it because that can screw up the calibration and uh, these things are really finicky. So if you touch it and you throw it off, chances are you're probably going to have to replace this whole thing. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to avoid removing the coolant lines and everything that are actually underneath this. So I'm just going to leave that on there, remove the throttle body itself and uh, show you guys where to go from there. Alrighty, so it appears that there's no actual lines connected to the throttle body. So I'm just gonna take this thing nice and easy, set that down right there. Um, so it looks like the lines that you need to disconnect are actually behind the throttle body. I'm gonna pull this gasket off too, just so I don't lose it. Okay, still good. So yeah, you have this little bolt, uh, this little connection right here one connection at the bottom and then i believe the other one is right here those three vacuum hoses and then you'll be able to start undoing all the bolts from around the plenum so i am going to undo all of these and uh get back to you once we're starting on bolt stuff okay so i got these two vacuum lines off it looks like the one down here i can't really 
get my wrench in behind there to get that tab together. Um, so what I am going to do is just leave that. I'm going to take out all the bolts, pull the plenum off, and then I'm hoping that I can actually reach under, uh, reach down there and get that one off. If not, not a big deal. I'm pretty sure if I just flip the plenum over, then I might be able to just leave it on there and put the spacer down without that off. So yeah, what I'm going to do is start undoing these bolts and um, see where we can go from there. Guess I'll get a little action shot for you guys. Okay, so all in all, I believe there's 18 of these bolts and one for this bracket right here. Now, there may be a few more. Uh, I just loosen these up with a wrench by hand. Then what I'm going to do is just get my power drill and just back these all off. Um, it looks like the kit comes with its own bolts, so you're not going to have to save any of these. But I know with some of the uh, 516s, the Motordyne kits, you do have to reuse some of the hardware. So just keep that in mind when you're pulling these bolts, uh, depending on your kit. Alrighty, so it looks like the two coolant lines that they were talking about, <clears throat> why they want you to drain the fluid is actually this line right here and this line right here. Now I'm going to leave these two attached now that I know what they are, like I say, because I don't want to have to drain the fluid. Um, I've got all the bolts off. Oops, I got six more to go, sorry. Um, and then once I do that, what we're going to do is be able to lift the plenum up and then I'll be able to see where I can place it in order to uh, check the inside and get a better idea of what's going on. <clears throat> Okay, so we got our plenum top piece off. What I did is I just took a bungee cord, just hooked it to here just to hold it up. As you can see, um, the inside, honestly, not too much pooling of oil. I'm pretty happy with that. There's not much in here at all. Um, since I did put in the oil catch can, I think it's been doing uh, somewhat of a good job. Mind you, this this isn't the bottom so I'm sure if I took the bottom off there'd be a little more pooling but whatever so what we got to do now is take off this OEM gasket now in my instructions it does not say anything about the OEM gasket oh please hold we're probably gonna leave that on there because it appears as though it goes underneath this whole thing. So yeah, I'm gonna leave the gasket on there, actually. I was gonna take it off because I figured that's just, you know, if there's one gasket here and then a gasket between the spacer and then another, uh, like gasket between the top I figured it's just more room for air but since this is a piece of this whole centerpiece I'm gonna leave that in um, so yeah now what you want to do is uh, bust out your spacer and we're just gonna use some of that uh, gasket maker like I showed you and first before I put the spacer down I'm gonna use the gasket maker run a little bead all the way around uh, the outside of this gasket put the spacer on, do another bead on top of the spacer, and then we can install this plenum. So I'm looking forward to it, man. I hope you guys are too. Let's get it going. Okay, so as you guys can see, I got a nice bead of gasket maker there. Just make sure that there's no um, excess on the inside of the intake that when it dries, it can get sucked into the motor. Um, so now that we have that all, uh, all put on and stuff, um, we're going to go and take our intake spacer. Now they tell you to uh, inspect this. It doesn't really look that smooth, but you know, I think with this gasket maker, it should be okay. So now what you're gonna wanna do is there's some holes here uh, where a bolt will slide right into. So what you wanna do is just slide that down. Now here, I just wanna show you guys something. This is where pe some people from what I've gathered um, seem to make a mistake. And that is when they put this spacer on that this rubber piece actually gets tucked under causing a vacuum leak. We do not want that. So we're just gonna make sure that we pull that out and then our spacer goes right down not pinching anything for the oil um, so as you can see we got everything put down it's looking pretty good 
get that down at the back there uh, so what I'm thinking a little bit more gasket maker all around the top here and um, yeah then we're gonna bolt this up torque it to spec and uh, hopefully it runs man okay so now that the spacer is on and the gasket makers on I caked it on there a little bit on the top since we don't have that OEM gasket helping out um, so once you got that installed what you're going to want to do is start to install your bolts now They do require washers on each one of the bolts. Um, so the long ones are going to go in the back These back three the next longest ones are going to go in these front three They all require one of these little washers with gasket maker on each side Then you're going to be able to drop the plenum down and put on the rest of these small bolts now They all require washers the ones for inside here require the spacers there uh, just so it doesn't leak any oil. So I'm getting pretty excited. I'm hoping that uh, everything's going to work out for the better. So I'm just going to go ahead, install these bolts and the little spacers and get back to you guys, man. Okay, so as you can see, we got our top six bolts just slid through. I found the gasket maker helped it to hold these little washers in place. So now what we are going to do is just drop this plenum down. Um, it looks like these nuts here actually aren't going to do anything anymore because they're not going to poke through, I don't think. But that's okay. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do now is just go through, install this plate, and... Uh, See what we can get going, man. Okay, let's drop this bad boy down. Clean off all of these. Uh, get this fucking bungee cord out of the way. Yeah. Uh. Okay, so as you can see, we just dropped the plenum down. I just hand tightened the six bolts on the top. Now what I'm going to do is go around, install all the rest of the bolts here. Like I say, it appears as though this nut right here is not going to be big enough for me to get something on here. But it looks like if we can torque down these sides, I think it should sandwich this down enough um, for us to be okay. But if not, we're going to have to find some kind of a way to extend that stud. But... We're going to have to see what happens, man, so uh, stay tuned and uh, wish me luck. Okay, so this is why I make these videos. Uh, basically, I've realized that I had two extra bolts and that these two uh, low bolts had to actually come out. So I just undid those and my gasket maker is already pretty much uh, solid here. Uh, so what I got to do is... Take all this gasket maker off, redo it, and then reinstall my plenum spacer. Uh, because, yeah, those bolts, the holes just can't be left open like that. So, uh, you live and you learn. So, we're going to go ahead, back on up here, and clean this beast up. Okay, so just getting the plenum installed for the second time. Those bolts that were here do need to be um, uninstalled. What I did is I just had a few extra bolts from uh, an old throttle body off the Altima. So I just cut the heads off and screwed them in just a little bit just for guidance while I was putting the plenum down. Um, so now that that is installed, I had to put redo the gasket and everything. So that was kind of a pain. But uh, now that that's all installed, I'm going to start replacing all of my bolts. And then we are going to torque this down to spec because... Because we don't want no vac leaks. Okay, so now that I got all my 
bolts hand tighten uh, this is pretty much the most important step and that is to torque all of your bolts down uh, now the kit that I got says seven foot pounds which is 84 inch pounds uh, you're gonna have to buy a low torque wrench for this this isn't gonna be one that you use for your lug nuts and stuff you're gonna have to get an actual one or you could rent it probably from part source but they didn't have it when I went and uh, then you're gonna look here and this is the torque specs as you can see there is an order uh, that it needs to be done so if you want to go ahead and pause this when you guys are done uh, hand tightening all your stuff and then these are the torque specs um, but for me I'm just gonna put the camera down uh, have a good look at this and then torque everything down to seven foot pounds and hopefully hopefully that's not gonna give us any vac leaks because that seems to be the most common issue with these installs is that people aren't tor torquing down the bolts uh, codes are coming up and stuff so this proper torquing technique is going to ensure that everything sits properly so I'm gonna put the camera down and uh, get at her man Okay, so now that all the bolts are uh, torqued down to seven foot pounds, uh, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our throttle body, all of our vacuum lines, uh, intake piping. Uh, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just retorque these just to make sure I didn't miss any. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see what happens, man. Okay, so I got everything reinstalled as far as the stuff that I took off. Um, throttle bodies all back, intakes all back, all of our vac lines are back. Um, I would definitely suggest going back around and retorquing um, because I, when I went around, the, the top six bolts were definitely, um, you could have probably undid them with your hand. I think as you go around, uh, tighten certain bolts, the ones that you've already done kind of loosen up a little bit. So definitely uh, retorque this at least twice. I did it three times just to make sure. Um, so everything is back together. Now I just have to wait for this uh, gasket maker to dry it says give it 24 hours before uh, putting the vehicle into service which kind of sucks because I really want to take it out right now and see uh, what kind of gains we have made if any um, but I think I'm just gonna be patient put the engine cover back on go upstairs have myself a quick shower maybe some breakfast because I am starving um, all in all this install took about two hours and that was with me screwing up not realizing that those two studs actually had to come out so you know this is why I make videos so that you guys can uh, you know learn from my mistakes and hopefully not have to deal with that kind of stuff so I'm gonna throw the intake cover or the engine cover back on uh, jump inside grab myself some food it's about 11 o'clock on Saturday. I'm gonna come back and just see exactly how soft this gasket maker is, but I'm gonna probably wait, um, you know, wait as long as possible to fire it up. And when I do, I will come back and record our first little trip slash startup. Hopefully we got no codes and we won't have to do this shit again. So yeah, uh, I guess it's a waiting game for me and uh, I'll be back to you guys in about two seconds. All right, well, it's the next morning. Everything's been drying for about 23 hours now. Um, so I'm just gonna start the car up and um, see if everything's running correctly. Hopefully everything's idling properly, but let's see. No check engine lights. Everything's idling. Well, a little high, but it is cold. Um, so yeah, everything is looking pretty good uh, so far. So what I'm gonna do is probably uh, strap the camera to the front windshield. I got a few cars in my driveway, I gotta move. And we're gonna go for a little bit of a drive. So yeah, let's see what's up. driving it around the block uh, a couple of times I'm noticing a little bit more of the high end 
uh, a little more pull above like four and a half, five thousand, where it was, it was kind of lacking before. It's nothing like super, super crazy, but um, I mean, I'm, I definitely notice it for sure. Um, I mean, for a hundred bucks, it's you know, it's it's worth it. I'd say. Like I say, I got the. Uh, we're just gonna turn around here, do a couple more little pulls. Wait for the old traffic to get the hell out of the way. Um, yeah. So I mean, considering I got it locally and it was relatively cheap. Um, but if you guys are buying it online, go with the five sixteenth because um, it's definitely dyno proven, more horsepower. Alrighty, let's see here. Uh, Everything's looking good. Do another little pull here. First gear. Nice pulling. Um, definitely, definitely a little bit quicker. Nothing too crazy. Oh, we got this. <laughs> That Civic Si that just passed, he just did a U-turn. I think he might want the uh, he might want this work. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty. Like I say, I'm pretty impressed with the money that was spent. Uh, it took about two hours with me um, screwing up, actually not taking out those two bolts. So yeah, you know, it's a nice, easy bolt-on horsepower, man. So um, I'd say if you guys are you know looking into getting this, um, I'd recommend it. Um, it's you know, it, everything's proven um, that even the five eights which I have on here is di gonna dyno gain you at least five to six horsepower, whereas the five sixteenth is about ten. Um, there's a little write up on one of the forums actually that I was reading up on, but you know whatever. I'm pretty happy, so I'm thinking that we are gonna put an end to this video. Um, as always, if you guys liked it, don't forget to smash that like button. Uh, don't forget to comment, subscribe, all that good shit. Um, yeah, so I guess I've got my rear bushings in. I've got the intake plenum spacer. I know a lot of my buddies have been uh, wanting me to come out and race, but I've been putting it off until I had those, those things on. So now they're all on. So it's time to get back to the track. It's time to get uh, back out to Mexico. Because I haven't had a trip out there in a while. And see what this baby can do, man. Um, it's shifting great. It feels good. So I'm pretty happy, man. So with that being said, I'm your boy Denali, a.k.a. Don Squally. We're going to catch y'all at the next one, man. Peace.